Hi hi everyone, so today's video is about candles. Um, I've chosen um, tins for my candles because I want a nice simple pour. I'd love to do all the piping and everything on the top and I do do a little bit of piping on here but nothing extreme uh, simply because of time. I mean ideally you want a business where you're not spending too much time making product um, piping all the cupcake soaps and all the cupcake bath bombs is incredibly time consuming compared to making a loaf uh, and I'd love to make cupcake candles I would just love to there's a lady on YouTube mostly Facebook uh, called sweet love candles every time I see her candles they are to die for they're incredible absolutely amazing and I'd love to do that style, but again, it's just all the work. And getting a recipe of candle wax to pipe like that in large quantities, I've actually found impossible. I mean, you can pipe so many, maybe six or ten at a time, uh, but any more than that, it just doesn't work. You've got to keep heating it up and all that sort of thing. So yeah, I've chosen a tin candle um, and we use the wooden wicks. The great thing with the wooden wick is it's smokeless. It does smoke when you first light it and it's so easy to apply to the tin. Just absolutely simple. Of course you've got to get it right in the centre but that's the only difficult part to this. Um, so today we're making 65. Um, one of my shops has ordered 65 candles and just about candles uh, they sell well but nothing's going to sell like soap does. I don't think anyway. I sell literally hundreds of bars of soap a day so um, nothing's going to sell like candles. I think since I started doing the candles I've maybe sold about maybe 600 of them I can't remember when it was I started doing the book but I've sold about 600 units uh, so that'll give you an idea um, where soaps I mean I literally sell well tens of thousands a year so right um, so what I'm going to do is I've what I always do is I'll just melt the wax in a plastic jug but these plastic jugs are rubbish at pouring neatly. So I'm going to dispense some of the wax that I have in here. There's two litres in here. This will no way do all of what I have there. Um, but I'm going to dispense it into a, a glass Pyrex dish. They have a, a fairly neat pour. Uh, so you don't get too much spillage on the side of the tin. Because if you do spillage on the side of the tin then it all has to be cleaned off which is extra work um, and the first fragrance I'm doing today is my Tuscan Fig so I'll be back in a sec I'll put the camera on a tripod and I'll show you how much I dispense into the glass jar and then we'll start pouring back in a tick so maybe if I lift this up higher then you can see into the candle better and the, the wax isn't red hot, uh, you've got to let it cool down obviously because you've got your flash points with your fragrance um, but also because the, uh, the wick is stuck to, uh, to the bottom of the tin with wax then you don't want it to melt and it might melt in some of them and you might see the wick move and then you've got, got to just quickly move it back again so nice and simple I just pour each one, not too fast, fairly slowly. That's just so we don't move the wick. And you see there's a nice measure line there inside each one. And I'm just going to stop when we get to that line. I also have the uh, best wax. You've got to look around for the and try lots of different waxes. You know, it's sort of the same with your soap making, but nowhere near as difficult as making soap. Uh, find the best wax to give a good scent throw. Um, and also, you've got to play about with your, your fragrances, you know, and just stick to the usage levels that they suggest. 
but there's a lot more fragrance per pound or per kilo in candle wax than there is in soap I think <laughs> yeah I'm pretty pretty certain that's true you see this one's moved that's because the wax on the bottom has melted so I'm just going to move it back to the middle like that again don't pour too much wax into your jug because that's where you get a lot of spillage and splashing if you've got too much in the jug it never pours neatly at least it doesn't for me So the lady that orders these, she loves the Tuscan fig because it's incredibly strong. It's a really, really strong uh, leafy wood fig fragrance. Very bitter. It's not like sweet fig from the fruit, it's fig leaf. And this is just the last little bit. And so we've got to keep melting more and more wax until we fill all 60 of these so you see two kilos does 10 candles i think they're about 220 um grams per candle but I also do a little bit of piping on the top right we'll be back soon um, and I'll just show you hopefully we've got time to video all of the candles being poured back in a more so next up we've got a uh, black raspberry and vanilla I've made 15 of the Tuscan fig and so we'll see how many of the black raspberry and vanilla we get out of this now it's always best to add your fragrance early so that the fragrance um, warms up in the oil and it separates a lot less if you do that. Um, I've noticed that if you tend to put your fragrance in right at the last minute um, you get little fragrance bubbles of fragrance on the top. Sometimes uh, it differs with every fragrance. So we've got a really rich, you see how the oil is a little bit too hot and it's moved the um, wick. But we've got a really rich dark purple colour here. And obviously it'll dry lighter. But the great thing with the marble top, the granite work surface, is that you can test what colour it's going to be before you pour it. So if you look there, you can see where it's dried onto the work surface. Same with when you're doing your massage bars. Uh, what question did someone ask me the other day? Ah, yes. Uh, there was a question the other day about whether you can put use mica in candles. I actually don't know the answer to that question um, but maybe someone who's been making candles a long time will be able to tell you or just buy some candle wax mix some mica in with it and then um, burn it and see what happens so I'm just going to move the wicks back into the middle like another thing, you know, the great thing with the wooden wick is you don't have to put the um, string, uh, sorry, the kebab stick across the top and tie your uh, string, well, the wick, through the uh, around. God, Karen, wake up, wake up, Karen. You don't have to put a kebab stick across the top and then wind your candle wick around. The, it to keep it in the center 
you can literally just move it that's if it melts and just like um, you do with your soap butter you can scrape every little last bit out of these with those uh, lovely soft spoons we all like to use yeah just a quick uh, something I remembered about the lady from um, god I'm still asleep uh, the lady from Sweet Love Candles, um, well over a year ago, she sent me a lovely message. I think I posted a comment on how beautiful her candles were on Facebook. And she sent me a lovely one back saying that I was her inspiration. Um, so that was really, really sweet. And then I had a go at making them myself. But yeah, just the piping, not easy. And very time consuming so they, I just made them a one off we have um, Sin Amour that's what I've decided to call this this smells like Cinnabar the perfume uh, if you're familiar with it it's just a magic fragrance I absolutely adore it and then next up we have Marshmallow um, marshmallow is not a, an amazing seller but the people that buy it buy it religiously um, along the back we have flirtatious and so that's a hot pink color and then down here uh, just starting to set up we have the linen and lace and then over here we've got Appleby Fair um, absolutely gorgeous as well another cinnamon blend it's difficult for me to choose between the two, the Appleby Fair and the Cinema, as to which I like the best. I change my mind on different days. Um, then we have uh, Chantilly Lace, which is all nicely set. And then we've got the Black Raspberry and Vanilla. Always looks blue, but it's actually a great, deep, gorgeous purple. And then on the end, there were the first ones we poured today, and that is Tuscan fig so yeah i remember there are actually two orders to fill not just the one so that's why we've made more than i started off with so i don't know exactly how many i've got here but it's around about 100 so that's the candles all poured now i just need to let them set and then we're going to pipe onto the top of them i'm going to show you some of the leveling tools that you need to level them off if they need leveling off and um, then it'll be labeling them up so we'll see you very soon it's very soon for you but it'll actually be tomorrow for me um, when we're doing those videos so i'll see you in a sec with the rest of this video okay so here we are back i think it's two days later uh, not a few hours uh, my battery went flat and then just been trying to pack so i don't have as many candles here as we started with but i've lined them all up neatly over here we have cinnamon which is like cinnabar magic smell then next up we've got marshmallow then we have linen and lace then these are apple be fair they're orange not yellow i know it looks yellow then we have flirtatious then we have chantilly lace and black raspberry and vanilla and then on the end is the tuscan fig you see quite a lot of those have disappeared um so what i want to do is i'm actually going to show you how to fill in these dips in the top of the candle dead easy um, all you need is a heat gun sorry a heat gun of some sort uh, this is just out of any any craft shop you can use the um, I tend to use the industrial ones that you take paint off with they get hotter so they work quicker but just for this I'm going to show you um, with this one now I'm going to zoom in so you can see closer and I've turned it on that's what the noise is I'm just letting it heat up before we do this so all you do 
when it's nice and warm is you just melt it on the top with this dead easy and you, you'll see that the hole will start to fill up with the wax and that's how you level them off another easy way to do this is if you have a radiator your house will smell fantastic but you can just put the uh, all the candles on a radiator and they'll melt and level out that way I haven't got a ton that are deformed they tend to deform the more fragrance you put in them um, so we're just going to move along and see if we have any more anywhere right these ones again this is because of too much fragrance because it's the marshmallow obviously marshmallow is never going to be a strong fragrance um, you'll see that this one has a sort of, of rippled effect on the top can you see that so we're going to do the same to this and what you might see here you might not is you might see the fragrance bubble up through the wax it's not going to actually it's going to work out fine And to clean any wax off your tin, dead easy, all you need is a nice hot dish cloth with a little bit of fairy liquid on, washing up liquid if you're in the States. Mind you, probably don't even call that. Ah, see that one? This one has got, got like a hole in. Wow, I love the smell of this. Marshmallow, it's delicious. You see it hasn't settled correctly because even underneath the top layer there are quite a few craters so it's always best to do this with them like I said that just shows you again you know just the same with soap Different fragrances make a huge difference in your candle wax as well, but it's a lot easier to rectify in a candle. If you use a very, very hot uh, gun, be careful because you can actually light the wooden, wooden wick. I've missed, I haven't quite filled this one here, it's not quite high enough. So I'll just melt some more, more wax to put in that one. Some of them might need a couple of goes. You know, once it's melted and set, you might need to remelt and set again. And then I think we're we'll spot on. That's all of them levelled off. And uh, the next part is we're going to do the, um, the piping on the top. Good grief, I feel like I've got nothing done today. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to put one label on. Mandy, if you're watching, this might help you a little bit. Um, my delivery driver turned up yesterday before I got the last about three labels on so I just um, Mandy's gonna have to do it herself so you see we've got a line at the back here this is our main label Philip hope you like these just made put all the information on one one label and so I'm just gonna peel it A little bit of a palaver, but a 
like everything I do. And then what I do is, as long as your label is spot on straight, it doesn't always work, but sometimes, mostly it works, but it doesn't always. And all I do is just wrap, wrap it round like this and flick it round. There you go, Mandy. Hope you think that looked easy. Uh, we'll just pop one of the lids on. And then for the lid, we put in the name of the fragrance on. And this one is Tuscan Fig. Again, a little bit awkward. I need to find a program and a, a company that sells labels where you can print 12 all at once because this one only takes nine but my label program what is it my label program prints nine but the labels i can buy have got 12 on them which is no good so i've got to find them to coordinate with each other mandy i hope you're enjoying watching this <laughs> There we go. Once you've got in there, you're okay. And that's it. Popped right on the top, in the middle. So the name of your fragrance is on the top. Eden Secret logo on the front. And information on the back. So you don't have to print four different labels, which is what I was doing before. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this candle making video. Um, I'll see you all very soon for my soap cutting videos. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.